Hallochen. Today I will be talking about Aphex Twin, who's one of my favorite artists, and we will speak about his production method or do or yeah, how he does the stuff. And I mean this is supposed to be a secret. At least he didn't say it like publicly publicly how is how he said what he's using or, or what he didn't use. Uh, there's a video actually of him using a tracker, I think Tracker Pro, and but yeah, there's not much about like what software or what what he uses. He mentioned like many things, like he does the software himself, he does the instruments. I don't know. There's a lot of information, and. But I've been always like super curious to understand or know what does he use, actually what he used during the 90s and 2000s, uh, because they're just my favorite albums. And yeah, I came to a few conclusions that I will share with you. And I'm, yeah, I'm actually, I'm like super happy of having found those because, you know, with, with for instance, a, a musician, I mean, like someone who plays like an instrument, if you want to know what they are doing in, in in the end, there's like something that is like the body of the person. And what I mean is like, you can pick up like, I don't know, like a drummer, John Bonham, for instance. And I don't like this thing of like thinking like, oh, it sounds like him because it's him and the magic behind it and everything is like, Let's analyze that. Why John Bonham sound like he does? He always used the same drums. He drags when he plays the fills. He also the recording because you never heard him live. Who records John Bonham? How do they do it? Of course, there's a lot of I mean he's amazing in big terms. But just let's get into details. What's happening? I mean he plays a big bass drum. Who plays a big bass drum? Nobody. Then you cannot say like, yeah, John Bonham sounds like John Bonham because he John, John Bonham. Buy the same drums. How do, are they tuned? Are, is there information about it? There is. Check it out. And yeah, that's the thing. It's like with someone playing an instrument, you have like 1,000 million information, but it is true that in the end, that is something that people call talent, um physiology, I don't know how I said, like the body, you know, you know if, if you play guitar and you have like one finger less, it will sound different and actually can, it can go in your advantage. Like there is like this gypsy guitarist, how is he called? Um, I forgot, but he had an issue with the hand and that explained his sound. So the thing is that with instruments, there's like something related with the body in the end effect, or however it's called. Like in the end, there's the body, it changes the sound. With electronic music, believe it or not, that's not there. It's zeros and ones, and that's the truth. So even if you say like, yeah, FX Twin, he's the best, he's magic, and it is, in the end, if you knew what he does, you can copy it and it will sound the same. It's not like, oh, FX Twin, it sounds like him because he's him. It's like, okay, yeah, but let's check it out. What what does he do? Uh, how he does it, you know? And I was crazy with him when I started like listening to his music, especially I got obsessed with with the album Drugs. And there are there's a track called like San Miguel something, <laughs> the track after April 14, that I think I hear it like almost every day two times for the last years. It's insane that track. I think that track is like the example of like I don't know. It's amazing. It's my favorite track from all time, I would say. And I've been hearing that track all over. And over. I mean, all the time, and I'm like. I would like to know how he does that. Uh, I think with electronic musicians, there are like two things to consider. 
one is like the the technology that they use and the other one is workflow because in the end you're an artist and if you are doing uh, electronic music it's because you like it so I don't understand like someone on YouTube like explaining you how to do like a techno kick is like man if you do techno the fan is doing the kick and that's what will define you so um I mean, I understand like someone teaching something and then you can learn from it, do your stuff. But you know what I mean? It's like knowing how some, something is done, it doesn't mean that it will embrace something to you as an artist because that's, that's the workflow, actually. Uh, because your instrument is like your computer, mostly, and you're seeing your hardware. Um but how you interact with them is like what makes you an artist. So here, this second thing, the artist thing, workflow, <coughs> is the thing from Apex Twin that I have no idea and nobody does. I mean, how can? I mean, unless he talks about it. But what about the technology? What does he use? Um, so I was like hearing his tracks all over again. You know, it's, it's like not the beginning of him, but just afterwards, like during the 90s and 2000, when you have like this sound of like, like all these like crazy things. And yeah, I mean, you hear this and it's like fucking insane. And I started like listening, thinking about how would I do this myself? It's not that I want to do this, but it, it feels like natural for me to know what everybody is doing, you know? Like, when I hear, I mean, especially the things that I like, like drums and techno, I want to know everything. Uh, so I check this stuff. And, yeah, I started, like, thinking, like, how does he do that? And the information I was getting, the information that I was getting from the music that I was listening to, it didn't make any sense. It was, like, so difficult, like... How the hell does he do that? It doesn't make any sense from the perspective of like a nowadays producer. Nowadays producer, I mean like someone with Ableton or Logic or whatever, where you have like one track and this track is one sound and this sound has these effects. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like the normal Pro Tools way to go from left to right. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't make sense. There's like too many sounds. It's, there's like in one track of him, you can hear like uh, 700 samples or something. So this thing of having like one track uh, per sound doesn't make sense. So here I said, okay, this has to, I mean, if, if this doesn't work, this has to do, we have to jump into thinking that he uses something related to samples. Um, because then if you have like a sample instrument that has like different sounds, you can like action them and being in the same track, easy peasy. So I was like getting there and then I was like, okay, uh, I can hear like also things. I mean, I, I hate, you know, this brand, Hunik, I don't know how it's called, K and... I don't know, it's like a very good drum. Uh, <laughs> not drum, brand that they do hardware and they did this thing wrong and I hate it so much, really. I spend all the money in hardware, always, always. Forget about sound quality, that doesn't make any fucking sense, otherwise you would not hear old music. But the hardware is so important that it's comfortable, really, otherwise... Anyway, after this parenthesis, back to Apex Twin. Samples related. There are too many sounds for one sample track. No fucking way. We have to go with something else. Samples. Uh, what else? He does something that I heard in a track. You have like one pattern and this pattern has these sounds. And then the same pattern sounds again with different sounds. And then it sounds again with different sounds. This like 
in light speed, like super quick. This would make sense if you have like a sample instrument and then let's say that you have like a piano roll or something that activates, activates like these notes and then you are changing octave, so to say, and then you trigger like other samples from the same instrument. But we are talking about the 90s and the 2000s. So it's like, how the hell do you do that? It's not, I mean, during those days, as far as I know, Cubase 1, at the beginning of 2000, Ableton was coming also, but it's not comfortable to do. And what I know about FX Twin workflow is that the only thing that I know, because we don't know, I mean, not his workflow, but all workflows, you have to be like comfortable doing this. You know what I mean? Because um, at the end of the day, you can do whatever the hell you want if you pick up like one track and start like cutting and you put a sample here and then another here. And you can do like many things, spending 1,000 years doing that. Like Delia Derbyshire on the 60s, she was doing like crazy stuff already with sounds. But it might take like two hours to pick up like a tape and cutting it and putting things together. But Apex Twin, he must be doing this like super quick. Otherwise, you lose tracking of what you are doing. Uh, and it's of course like one million times more complex than Delia Derbyshire. But still De Delia Derbyshire. Super good. Anyway, uh, things that I realized, those changes. So he might have like a pool of sounds and with the same pattern, he's changing the sounds. That's interesting do, doing that in the 90s or 2000 early. So we have already these two things. Third thing, linear patterns. And this is, this is one of the most interesting ones. Uh, so you have like the 16th notes in almost like 200 BPM and it's like super difficult to hear, but almost all the time you're hearing like linear patterns. So linear patterns is like when you have like different sounds, but they never are, I mean, they are never played at the same time. So this with drumming would be, in, I mean, if you play like a drum set, if you never play your hands together or together with your feet, like no limp sounds at the same time as another limp. It's like a linear pattern, like well, this makes sense here. <laughs> but yeah, so in if you are like if you are with a sample machine, uh, imagine like samples all the time, but they never touch each other, which it's interesting because the amount of sounds, it's insane. And not only like the sounds, because if you think about the sounds of a sampler, you, th you think about the track. So imagine that you have like one track where you have like the hi-hats and the hi-hats are changing, blah, blah, blah. But he does that in another level. Like it's changing percussion, hi-hats. Suddenly you have like a vinyl doing like, and this thing cuts the other stuff. It's like if uh, FX Twin, if you think about tracks per sound you may think like okay fx twin might have like a project with uh, 700 tracks but if you he really listen that the samples they are never overlaying each other they are one after another when you hear like that they are one after another so if you think about tracks there are actually not many tracks there are like 700 sounds, yeah, they do. But if you think about it, you have like the the scenes in one way and then you have like the, per the percussion in another way and the percussion is together with the noises. That, of course, if you are like playing at 200 BPM, 16 notes, we are talking about lots of notes. But tracks... Per se, if you listen to the linear patterns, there are not this many. If you hear like closely, they don't. Because, yeah, they are in the same track, seems like. Uh, what else? When you have like the same track, there are like different samples, but sometimes the same sample has different information. I mean, it sounds different than the same sample before. So in the same track, 
out of all these samples, there is one sound that sounds different, like pan here or here or more distortion or reverb. So it's like, okay, how the fuck does he do that? There's one way to do that, which is like, you have like one sound like this, and then you record this sound uh, like 100 times, and every time that you record it, you change something. So imagine that I do like this, I do like this with a distortion, I do this with reverb, I do this pan here, I do this pan here, and then you have like a, one track of one minute of this sound like 50 times sounding different and then you chop it and you have like a pool of sounds of the same sound but then doing that with the linear patterns all together is like it's too much again it's like 25 years ago doesn't make sense so what else are we left with also changes of um uh, of measures he does changes from like 4/4 four, four to 12/8 and so actually 4/4 four, four still but going to triplets okay so you are you understand what i mean so you have like tick 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 he he does that and you are like okay we are in the 90s there's no piano roll how the fuck do you do that um I will say what he does in a few minutes. I'm just checking like if I said everything that freaked me out. Um So okay. There might there might be a way in which you have we said one track, one million sounds, and the sounds even if they repeat themselves, they can have like different information about the effects or where they are panned or something. The good thing is that knowing all of this in my brain and before knowing what he uses that I will say in a few minutes, so you stay until the end, um, I was still listening to him and I was thinking like that he was like a magician doing all this crazy stuff nonstop and... The fact that I didn't know about music trackers, which is the answer, I was thinking all the time from my Ableton Logic perspective. So I think that made me like hear more because I didn't know about music trackers, which with you can do all of this easily. So I, this is so annoying. I need new headphones. I do have a new head. Anyway. Uh, so, because I didn't know the answer to what was he using, that made me hear more and hear more and hear more. And I think that's good because that made me go like super deep into what sounds, what is there. And... The, what happened is that one day I was looking on the, in, on the internet for the 100th time what is does affect twin use or does affect twin use and you have all this bullshit that yeah he creates everything himself and this is all magic and he's Mozart which he is but again it's technology he might he has to do something and this thump, something we should know so I was checking the albums and the year that it was released and just checking, 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 checking. What's up? Information. So I came to realize something called music trackers. And someone said on a forum, he might be, he might be using music trackers. And also because I think Apex Twin himself or someone uploaded a video of a track using a music tracker on Vimeo. You can search for it. And what is a tracker? So when I saw the tracker, actually I remember the guy from the forum was saying like, he might use something like Renoise. And I was like, eh, what is Renoise? And then I found that the solution of all my problems. So I could sleep again 
before listening again to the Sam Michael song for the 100th time in one night. Music trackers. There's actually a very good documentary about music trackers that you can see that is like 30 or 40 minutes long on YouTube. Music tracker, long video, there's only one. But I will do like myself the a quick explanation. So music tracker is like if you're familiar with Ableton, imagine that every clip, no, every scene actually, imagine that every scene is um, a 16th note and that when you press play, the scenes go down like super quick, like and for every clip in your track, every clip is, let's call it a piece of information. And this piece of information holds one sample and then information about uh, effects or panning, volume, all this stuff. For every clip. So you can choose that for every 16th note. And actually, if you see like the workflow of a tracker, it's like super easy to pull this like down like very quick. It it looks like crazy. It is a little crazy. But yeah, I mean, I can also recommend like that you go on YouTube and put like the the guy loop up loop 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 up. Yeah, loop up. And he does an analysis of the polyend tracker, which is a piece of hardware. Um where you can see like the workflow and it is like it's actually super easy to go down and fill it with information. So if you have a pool of samples, like let's say like 32, putting in the tracker, so in one track, actually this track doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with the sound itself. The track is just like this. And then you have every 16th note. And then you can fill it with like different samples. So then you have like the this destruction um, sound which in the end is like different sounds one after another for every sound you can choose like the panning for instance sometimes I was uh, listening to FX Twin and I was like this sound sounded here and suddenly it's on the left with reverb and it's like you know how to do that but he does that every half a second for 8 minutes in a track with 1000 sounds mm. So actually, if, if you know how the tracker looks, it's like super easy to, you have one sound and this sound here, you put it like the pan here and then this sound here, you put the pan there. And you can do that with the keyboard, like the normal keyboard from the computer. And you can do that like super quick. If you think about like a logic perspective, Pro Tools, automation, you would get like fucking nuts with it. Okay. Uh... But with the tracker, it makes a lot of sense. Again, uh, you have one sound that sounds on the left, on the right. Then the sound on the right has reverb. If you think from automa automation, automatic, uh, automation perspective, it's a fucking nightmare. Like you have to put the scent of the the scent just where the sound sounds. So this goes to the reverb, so it sounds, but sometimes you could hear like the sound, the reverb like got chopped by the next sound and it's like, oh my God, and we are in the 90s, what the, the tracker, solution. You can like one one sound, one 16th note, you can put like reverb and you can also choose like, um, you can do a resampling, so you have like the sound with the reverb and you can tell that when the next sound sounds, it cuts the clip. So you have like suddenly a sound with reverb, but the reverb gets like chopped when the next sound sounds. And all this, you can do that with the music tracker super easily. So yeah. I I mean, if you knew how much this matters to me, you won't believe it. Because now I'm hearing FX Twin and I'm, I have the tracker in my head, uh, Renoise. Renoise is like, let's say the, the brand that did a very good tracker that you can buy nowadays. You have like uh, Renoise and then you have like Redux, which is like Renoise inside your door as a VST. I don't know if you want to check it out. So yeah, now I listen to FX Twin. 
What the hell? Something in the street. And now I listen to FX Twin and I see the tracker in my brain all the time going down. And I hear everything. And I love that. Because I don't like magic shit. I, I like understanding. And when you see like someone playing an instrument, like hearing, most of the times you can imagine this person playing that instrument. And with electronic music, I have to see like the door, what's happening, you know? And if, some, if something doesn't make sense, I investigate. And yeah, I found out about FX Twin music trackers. If you, I mean, if you don't want to buy a music tracker, but you are like interested like me, uh, I still didn't buy it. I'm just obsessed, uh, like watching, I don't know, information about it, but I will buy it like today or tomorrow. Even if I knew this like from some weeks ago, um, I don't, I forgot what what, are, what I was gonna say. It's amazing being able to hear all this music, knowing that it makes me like a lot of peace of mind. And now I also like feel that I can study the person like more because yeah, when I hear a drummer, I'm thinking about how he does that. How can I do it? More information he or she or whoever. Uh, and with electronic music, it's the same. And since I have, like, this information now, when I hear, like, a square pusher, all the <laughs> video game music from the 90s, Sweet Trip, the album called Velocity Comfort Design, something like that, the best album in the fucking planet from the 2003, I think, uh... They might use a tracker. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, you start understanding that the music from the 90s, beginning from the 2000s, if, if you know about the tracker, now it makes sense. And I have the feeling that this was like one of the my biggest, my biggest headaches and also one of the things that opened my mind a lot. Because lately I'm like listening a lot of like litchy music and things from like related to I not related but similar to FX Twin and now that I know this I can sleep in peace so yeah I wish that someone who uh, someone had told me this so I could sleep before you know <laughs> because if, if you put like uh, FX Twin door on the YouTube you have all this like mystical, oh, FX Twin is like the god of whatever, but nobody explains stuff. So yeah, I hope this is valuable to you too. And I see you next time. Adios.